Hi, everybody. Welcome to the conference. I'm Katherine Watson, and I'm here with three senior experts who are here to share lots of information with you today about community resources right here in Houston, Texas, and the surrounding areas. Uh, we've got a ton of information to give you, so I'm not going to waste any time. I want to go around the room. We're going to introduce everybody. They're going to tell you a little bit about what organization they're with and kind of basically what they do. And then we're going to dig in and get a little bit more information, okay? All right. So let's start with Ariel Green. Hi, my name is Ariel Green, and I am the Caregiver Support and Education Specialist for Care Partners. And so we have a number of services for caregivers. One primarily that we'll be talking about today is our adult day center and our gathering place. We also offer caregiver education, such as this one that you're receiving today, as well as caregiver consultation programs for caregivers. And so our overall goal is to support older adults as well as family caregivers out in the community. Thanks, Ariel. Uh, they do an amazing job. If you haven't heard of Care Partners before, you really need to go check them out. At the end of the show, by the way, I will be putting up all of the contact information for these ladies and their organizations so that you, you'll have all the information you need to be able to get uh, in touch with somebody who can help you. Let's go to Suzanne next. Suzanne Terry, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what your organization is and what they do? Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Suzanne Terry. I work for the Harris County Area Agency on Aging, and I oversee the in-home support services. The goal of Area Agency on Aging is to ensure that we are able to provide services to older adults and prevent premature institutionalization. We provide an array of services that is geared to individuals in their home, um, personal assistance services, in-home respite, adult daycare, which we are in partnership with NFA Care Partners. Um, we also provide visiting services, emergency response services, um, medication management, just a plethora of services that is geared to older adults and their caregivers to relieve the stress and to make sure that they're able to get the services that they need in their home and in the community and again, to prevent premature institutionalization. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Suzanne. You're welcome. And uh, let's go on to Sonia Nelson. Sonia, tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sonia Nelson, and I work for the Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, in particular, I am at the Michael E. DeBake VA Houston Medical Center. Um, I work with veterans in the particular care line of programs called geriatrics and extended care. And it encompasses an array of services that we utilize to try to maintain the veterans safely in their home and in their communities and, and to prevent, again, like, city, uh, like Houston, um, premature institutionalization. Um, I'm the community programs coordinator and a lot of the, pro the programs that I in particular we work with are adult daycare and veteran directed. Care Partners is one of our community partners because we provide, um, we pay for adult daycare for our veterans by partnering with facilities in the community in order to offer those services. And so we try to catch veterans at the beginning of, of the geriatric trip which is what I like to say, because we're all going to go through that. And we try to meet them at every stage um, of their life and what that means. That can start off with them being assigned to a specific geriatric clinic where the clinicians there specialize in illnesses and diagnoses that tend to, to um, present themselves in the geriatric population. And then we can use adult daycare or veteran directed or homemaker home health aid program um, remote monitoring, all kinds of things. And then at the very um, end of that, if we have been able to manage them successfully and we get to that role where it's time for institutional placement, we also have VA contract nursing home. And so we try to manage them in the community, in their homes over the long term. 
Okay. Wow. I'm excited because I'm already learning stuff. Um, there's things that I didn't know. I had no idea the VA had all of that um, services and all available. And I knew a lot about area of aging for area agency for aging, but I, there's a lot that I don't know. So I'm so grateful to you ladies for being here um, and care partners. I'm just really grateful to all of you for being here today. So let's dive in and talk about adult <laughs> daycare. And um, I, I want to get uh, some information from whoever wants to answer this next question. What can you tell us about adult day centers and what does a typical day look like? Well, um, I'll dive in there. Uh, adult daycare for us is to give not only the veteran the level of care that they need during the day, but it, we also use it as respite for the caregiver. Because as we all know, being a primary caregiver is is um, not for the faint of heart and it is extremely stressful. And many of them are still actually in the workforce. And so adult daycare provides that level of assistance that is needed to keep them safe during the day. And that becomes with nursing services that can manage their medications while they're there. They're getting provided with meals, you know, breakfast, lunch, snacks, and they're getting programming. One differing thing for the VA that is unlike a lot of adult daycare services is that many of our veterans are on the Alzheimer's or the Parkinson's or the dementia spectrum. And so while we know socialization is very important, we don't want it to be just socialization. We want the centers that we contract with to be able to provide clinical programming that is either cognitive restructuring or cognitive stimulation so that we can maintain them at a functional level and decrease the chances that they're going to quickly lose the level of functioning that they have. So we want them to have the socialization and the clinical stimulation piece. And we also contract with those that provide outings. It is very important to keep um, our veterans engaged and active and long-term, even if you're having problems with um, cognition, often long-term memory and recall are those things that are most prominent. And so when we're taking them to outings, they're generally, our providers are doing things like taking them, Air Force veterans who go to NASA can recall a lot of that information and it keeps them stimulated. And so we want them to be involved in the community in a way that keeps them active and engaged. And so for us, that's what adult daycare looks like for us when we're uh, partnering with our community partners. So let me ask you something, Sonia. Um, do you have partners around the city or is it just in one area? Where are these adult day centers? They're located across the city and the surrounding metropolitan area. Right now, we have providers in Houston, uh, Pearland, Kingwood, Spring, the Woodlands. Um, yeah, pretty much. We right. are expanding and trying to find new partners in, in areas that are currently underserved for our veteran population. And so we're looking to get into Katy and um, Lufkin and the far out more rural communities where a lot of these things are so sorely needed. But right Great. now, those are the areas where we're concentrated. Okay. And our Great. veterans, depending upon their level of functioning, can go up to five times a week. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, Ariel, do you have anything to add? I know that you, uh, Care Partners, has an adult day center. Right. Um, actually, Sonia covered it quite well. It is our day center. It does provide the opportunity for the individual with dementia to come to be in a supportive and safe environment. I think that's a, an important part of it. And then also the caregiver, for the caregiver to get a break um, is also very important as well. One thing I will add about our day center, um, being that we are 
working with individuals with dementia is that it is a secure environment. So once they're in the building, they're there, they're safe. Um, we have a nurse on staff, as Sonia mentioned, to manage those medical needs that they might have. If the individual or the person is not able to do some of their personal care tasks, we can assist them with them, assist them with that. And so overall, it provides them with a safe and supportive environment so that they can socially connect and be engaged um, in activities throughout the day um, that gives the caregiver a break and also gives the individual a sense of, of purpose um, and belonging. Okay, great. So Zan, do you have anything to add? <laughs> so, you know, Ariel and Sonia covered a lot of information and I echo everything they said, but I would also like to add one of the things in addition to what was shared that the area agency on aging take pride in being able to provide the services to individuals who are unable to afford it. Um, and we typically authorize for 90 days and then we began to work with them to see what are some other options that they have. So that's one of the things that we're glad that we're able to work with the caregivers, develop a care plan and connect them to those different adult daycare places that will fit their needs. So then they can go to work and also in a safe and provide a safe environment for their loved ones. So we take pride in being able to provide those services of no charge. That's awesome. That kind of dovetails into my next question, which was what does a typical adult day center cost? So if, if you do not qualify for no cost, what can we expect in cost, Ariel? So I can speak for care partners. So if you aren't able to tap into the services through the VA or the Harris County Area Agency on Aging, we charge $80 for a full day mm -hmm. of care, which is pretty good um, because our center is open from 7.30 until 5.30. And that includes the snacks. That also includes lunch, as well as all of the additional care that's provided. We also have a half day option. And so I would encourage you all to reach out um, to us if you are in, in need of care, because we can talk to you about some additional resources um, that's available, but eighty dollars is about the the range, and that is very reasonable. I mean, when you consider that home care, if you brought a home care worker into the home, how much would that cost for a full day? Um, it, it's going to be way more. So uh, I think that's a adult day centers. I've always been a huge fan of them. That's a, a great option for families. Um, let me ask you this: Do most of the centers provide transportation? to and from, or is this something that families have to figure out on their own? So we don't provide transportation ourselves, but we do partner with MetroLift, where if they're eligible or they live in Harris County, or not necessarily Harris County, but within the MetroLift service area, we can assist the family with getting connected with transportation. Outside of that, I don't know if, I don't think AAA or the VA provides any additional transportation. So I'll let them answer that question. But Metro Lift is a partner um, for us to help families. And Care Partners is one of our daycare facilities that has been um, gracious enough to purchase Metro Lift tickets for those veterans. Um, many of our adult daycare facilities, uh, the VA will reimburse you for the transportation if the facility provides it itself. So if we have a veteran who has a clinical, has a diagnosis that may require clinical intervention during transport, we are more than able to, we, we provide, we will reimburse for the transportation. Um, the facilities that have vans and provide their own transportation, uh, they have it with, they staff the transportation vans with staff members who in the event there is a clinical emergency, they're on board to, to, to make the necessary arrangements or to monitor the veteran until emergency services arrive if um, warranted. And so we do provide transportation reimbursement for our facilities that have their own transportation. And we offer that service for the veteran and the physician generally will order it uh, as the transportation is medically necessary. So when we have veteran, let's say just examples that may have a seizure disorder that 
there could be an emergency during transport. We want to make sure that they're with people who would be able to respond appropriately. Or if you have someone who is on a dementia spectrum somewhere, they could have a behavioral episode in transport that will require clinical intervention. And so under these circumstances, we have uh, transportation available and reimbursed by the VA. That's great. That's really good. Let me ask another question now. Does a senior need to qualify to attend? Do they have to get a doctor's orders or anything like that? Yes. Um, speaking for the VA, if it's a veteran, the first thing that they would need to do is make sure that they're enrolled at the medical center. And once they're enrolled at the medical center, then they will be assigned a physician. They would see the physician and they would also be seen by a clinical social worker who would assess them for the program. Those things come to me once the doctor orders it. And what we're looking for are all kinds of indicators. There could be someone who has um, cognitive um, issues, or it could be someone who has a need or dependency in three to four ADLs, someone who is clinically depressed, someone who has had 12 or more um, visits to an outpatient or ER visit. That tells us that's a problem in the community that is not being met and they're repeatedly having to come for medical attention. Although it may not be medical, there's a, there's a need. Um, we're trying to look at those people that we can use this as an adjunct to nursing home placement, 75 years or older, living alone. All These are all clinical indicators that we look at at people who would be appropriate for adult daycare. And once the physician's order is written, those things come to me and then I can look at them and approve them for the number of days that are appropriate and send the referral out because we always give the adult day center the ability to the review the referral and make sure that this is someone that's going to be appropriate for them. Because once you accept, we are expecting that you're gonna provide the veteran with the level of care that he needs to thrive. Okay, okay. And on our end, we, um, we do the same thing Sonia's doing. We assess our care managers, assess the client, and do all the paperwork that's needed. But before we provide the service authorization, we reach out to our contract agencies, whichever one we want to refer them to or they're interested in attending to see if they meet the qualifications. And once they've gone through everything they need to with our use interfaith care partners, um, well then we'll go ahead and give the go ahead and send over the service authorization. But before we have to make sure that they are a good fit. So you ladies all really work very closely together yes. to help the family. So if somebody comes to Area Agency on Aging and they're a v veteran, you will be able to send them over to um, the Veterans Administration for more help, right? Yes, and, and actually... Uh, the three, the, the three of us work very closely together. Of course, NFA Care Partners, um, they have a contract with AAA. We send over consumers. And with Sonia, with the VA, we have a, another program called Veterans Directed Program. So actually, you know, our, our network is very strong. We all work very closely together we with do. collaboration of serving the older adults and their caregivers. That's great. And there's one thing that I can mention too. I think a lot of times veterans and their families believe that certain services, they have to be service connected. Right. To go to adult daycare, you do not have to be a service connected veteran. You only need to be enrolled at the medical center and have a need for the service. Now there can be a copay and there is something called an extended care application that they would fill out and return to eligibility and based on the assets and, and, and that kind of thing, they would determine whether or not they had a copay. But in the event they do have a copay, it's only $15. Great, great. I will also add um, about the day center as far as criteria on our end, you do have to have a diagnosis of dementia from the doctor. So not only you, if you're getting connected with Harris County Area Agency on Aging or the VA, you have to be in their system. You also have to have a diagnosis of dementia and be able to medically like be able to transfer and lift on your own. So 
mobility wise, you have to be appropriate in that regard and appropriate to attend the day center. But the main thing is the diagnosis. So a lot of people, their loved one, they know that they have dementia, but they don't have it officially in writing. And so in that case, we do um, have to ask that the family go back to the doctor and ask them to make that official diagnosis to be able to attend um, the day center. Okay, great, great. All right, we have got a ton of more questions. So I wanna segment now to senior centers. Um, there's a lot of senior centers around the Houston Metroplex area. They're everywhere. Tell me a little bit, if you will, someone, um, let, let's start with Suzanne. Suzanne, tell me a little bit about what exactly is a senior center and what kind of services someone might expect to find at a senior center. Okay, so the AAA, which is for Harris County Area Age Sound Agent, is um, uniquely placed under the city of Houston, and we're under the umbrella of the health department. So what, what I'm saying is basically the, um, the senior centers or the multi-purpose centers, a lot of them are connected to the city buildings. And if not, they're congregate meal sites, which are senior centers. And as you know, the Harris County Area Agency on Agent sponsor the Meals on Wheels program and the congregate meal sites. So what that does, it provides socialization, um, activities with other peers, um, field trips, and just a ton of things to keep um, seniors active. The difference with an adult daycare versus a senior center, you do not have, and I'll use NFA Care Partners for an example, you do not have to have a diagnosis of dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, you're just a vibrant older adult who would like to continue socialization and get out the home and also get a hot meal um, Monday through Friday. Okay, so you provide meals every Monday through Friday at these yes, at the congregate meal sites. Yes, okay. the ones that are associated with you know the Meals on Wheels congregate meal site. Yes. How? Uh, just a question that I just thought of. How about how many people would you say attend these? Ooh, wow, I, I don't. I can't guess. I mean, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I really wouldn't know the number to give you, but it it's it's a good bit. It's yeah. a good bit. Yeah. But right. I can. I, I um, think it's such a that wonderful service. To you later. Yeah. I, I like the idea that you have these congregate meal sites. I didn't know that existed, and uh, so I learned something new again. Uh, mm -hmm. But that is. That's a great because it does bring in that socialization. Uh, you're not sitting there eating alone at home by yourself. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to find a senior citizen, say I wanted to find a senior uh, center for my parent, mm -hmm. and where would I go to look for that? Okay. So I have the answer to your question. I did a little research. I was multitasking. So <laughs> Um, in regards to congregate meal sites, um, we have provided over 10,000 um, meals with, with that service. Wow. With the Meals on program. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So can anybody answer the question, how, where do we find these senior centers? So they're, they're throughout um, the city of Houston, while Harris County, um, you would simply just, you can go on the city's website or the area agency on agents website, and you'll be able to locate the different congregate meal sites. Or you can call the area agency on agent at 832-393-4301. And one of our um, information referral specialists, which is the front door to the AAA, will provide the, um, they would get your zip code and let you know which um, congregate meal site slash senior center is nearest you. Great. And if you're listening to this, don't worry if you didn't catch that phone number, I'm going to have it at the end of the show for everybody so that you'll be able to uh, contact them and get the information that you need. So is there a cost to attend a senior center? No, it's no. not. Okay. And are they usually open like nine to five or eight to five or something every day of the week? How does that work? So I can start off with that. It varies on the, the congregate meal site or the senior center. It depends on 
the need and um, their staffing. So it varies. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So the best news, the best way would be to contact your organization, Correct. find out which ones are close to you and what their hours would be. Correct. And then contact the person who's running that particular senior center and they'll let you know their hours. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything they want to say about senior centers? They're awesome. I'm, I'm glad yeah. that they, oh, <laughs> I know they were closed for a while um, for COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think they're just now reopening. And so yeah. it's a great, a great resource. Right. So, it is a great resource. Yeah. And most of the time when we have um, veteran seniors who are interested in these types of programs, we tend to refer to Harris County Area Agency on Aging because they have such a breadth of knowledge or they can meet with their social worker in clinic and they will go with the, they will Google with them where your zip code is so that they can give them the specific information to their jurisdiction. What I can say is, is some of the, the senior programs, like if, for instance, for our um, uh, uh, adult daycare provider that was in Rosenberg, when we had veterans who had difficulty with transportation, they would arrange between the senior township and their service, transportation service, would actually take them to the center. So the senior multi-purpose centers have, they do a lot of things. And for those that have transportation, they don't just pick them up and bring them there. They can also schedule to, to get them to their adult daycares if they are uh, their functional impairments don't preclude them for getting on and off the township van. Yeah. Okay. All right. And another thing I wanted to just add with the senior centers, they do so much more. They do a lot of evidence-based services. And often a triple way, I have um, some of their services on site, you know, when coordinated, just to let them know what's going on and, and bringing everything to them. Example, when it's open enrollment, we have our certified benefits counselors who will go to different senior centers to make sure that we get everyone enrolled in, you know, for open enrollment. So we're, right. you know, the triple A is involved in a lot of different activities surrounding the uh, senior centers, just trying to make sure that they stay relevant and, and active. And one mm -hmm. of the things I really love when they have their um, dance groups or whatever their, um, you know, different organizations are, and then they get to showcase it when we have events. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. I love it. So let's uh, segue now into caring for someone in their home. Um, I know that I, I cared for my mom in her home for the last two years of her life. Um, she was completely bed bound. Uh, for my mother-in-law, it wasn't an option for her to stay in her home for various different reasons. So every family situation is different. But uh, there's a lot of people that do want to stay in their home, and but they, they need help. I mean, it takes a village, right? We yes, all right. say that. It takes a village. And so we need to know what kind of resources there are out there that are available that can help you know, with that staying at home and caring for somebody in their own home. Okay. So I want to start with a question and I'm going to aim it at Ariel because it's something that's near and dear to my heart. And that's called the gathering. My sister's actually one of y'all's volunteers up in Kingwood. Um, I think this is the one of the most amazing programs I've ever come across and I love it. And people don't know about it. So would you tell us about it, please? Sure. So the Gathering Place is a three and a half hour activity program that is offered at our, I'll say con mainly congregations and churches. They volunteer to put on this wonderful and exceptional program. And so it gives um, the person with dementia, similar to the Day Center, an opportunity to socialize with other individuals. It also gives the caregiver a break um, so that they can get away, run an errand, go to a support group, do whatever it is that they want to do. And so we are able to facilitate those programs with volunteers. So we partner with organizations such as congregations to provide these activity programs. So the day starts at about 10 o'clock. People arrive. They have activities. They have music. It is very lively, as Catherine mentioned. And then they end the day 
with lunch. And so it's really an opportunity. And the thing is, is once a month, I wish they were every single day, but they're once a month, the church commits or the congregation commits to offering the, the program once a month. And they're throughout the Harris County and surrounding areas. So you're in Fort, we're in Fort Bend. We're also in um, Montgomery County and as well as Harris County. And so it's a wonderful, wonderful program. Um, throughout the Houston area. So if you are interested, definitely reach out to us and we can get in contact with you. The thing that I did not mention is that it's completely free. It's of no charge to the family caregiver. So if the family does not have the resources to pay for care, it's a great opportunity um, for them to get a break at least at least once a month. And some of um, our care partners go to multiple gatherings a month. We get to see them often. So they do. They do. I met a little lady. The first time I found out about the gatherings, I was working in a senior care facility and I met this little lady and she told me that the only way she had been surviving caring for her husband who had severe Alzheimer's at that point, but he had been, you know, moderate to uh, uh, mild for a number of years. She said, the only way I survived this was because of the gatherings. And she would go to four different gatherings a week. <laughs> she found them all across town and she just drove around and it gave her a break. It also, she said, helped her connect with other caregivers who were going through similar things. She said sometimes she stayed there with her husband and enjoyed the um, the, the event. I know for my sister that they uh, have a theme every time you know, and they do just a fabulous job of putting together a great program for, for people. So I love it. And it's free. And that's just wonderful. So thank y'all for doing that. So the next thing I want to talk about is, are there any other resources out there available to help someone in their own home? Um, absolutely. I, I will take it from a VA perspective. I think one of the the biggest things that we want to talk about that helps keep people in their home, starting with their primary care. Most people have their primary care clinics and they come in and they see their doctor and they have nurses and they can see the social worker and all that. But how about the VA actually does that in home? It's called home-based primary care and it actually takes the place of your in-clinic primary care team. And it's a team-based approach for those veterans who have disease processes and, and multiple medical comorbidities that either keep them homebound or they can't travel very far. If they have a clinical need for the service, then they can be enrolled in that. It is headed by the uh, their primary care doctor. They will have nursing home visits on a monthly basis. They get occupational therapy, physical therapy, the social worker comes to the home. Anything that that veteran needs and anything that's done in a clinic setting is replicated in the home setting. And that goes a long way for keeping people at home and also making sure that they're getting the medical care that they need. Because oftentimes when they are very uh, ill and not as mobile and not able to get around, they start to miss vital clinic appointments. And what a wonderful idea to have the home-based primary team travel to you. And now the veteran is insured to get the care that they need. Um, another thing that can help them stay in the home is also the Homemaker Home Health Aid Program. And that is unskilled care that will help the care provider maintain the veteran in the home. They can help with all kinds of ADLs. They can do bathing and dressing. They can help with transfers. They can do laundry. They can do meal preparation. Anything that the veteran needs to be taken care of in the home in order to maintain them in the home safely is what the Homemaker Home Health Aid Program can do in that respect. Great. Um, we also have respite, which is very important as well, because it gives that much needed respite to the primary caregiver so that they can have a break to leave the home and take care of whatever uh, uh, appointments that they have for them, their own selves. But it also gives them a break physically in the home from being the person rendering all the care. And we will have a respite care provider who will, we will send from an agency to come out to do all the things that need to be done for the veteran in the home. Again, ADL care, it could just be supervision. So someone is there so the, the veteran's um, a caregiver can leave. So respite is another one. 
Okay. And then the final one we would have would be, and Suzanne smiling, this is how we work so, so yeah. closely together. Mm -hmm. It's a relatively new program as far as the VA goes. Uh, most of our programs are, you know, 60, 70 years old. It's veteran directed care, and it has only really been in existence in the last 15 years. And it's still not available at all VA centers, but we have it here. And we actually partner with Harris County Area Agency on Aging to provide veteran directed care. And it's for those veterans whose needs have exceeded what we could typically manage in our homemaker home health aid program. And now they are at risk of institutionalization. Veteran directed comes in and it provides a budget for them to hire their own employees to come in and take care of them in the home. And so it is a wonderful tool in our arsenal of helping to keep the veterans at home. That's great, that's great. Now, what if I'm not a veteran? Who can help me? I can. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Harris County Area Agency on Aging Care Coordination Program um, provide personal assistance services um, which is basically providing um, the um, older adult with assistance with the ADLs and IADLs. Um, we also provide emergency response, and that's the life alert button, which provides um, a security blanket for the older adult who's isolated with little to family support coming in and out. We provide visiting services, which is a partnership that we have with the Senior Companion Program through the Jewish Community Center to where senior companions go into the home and provide um, companionship, light, light support in, in regards to maybe providing a glass of water, maybe fixing a sandwich, but nothing major, basically companionship. Mm -hmm. We also provide um, chore maintenance. That's a program that really, really um, kicked off pre-COVID and when COVID occurred, you know, everything somewhat changed. So stay tuned for that. With <laughs> our caregiver services, we provide respite services, which is geared for the older adult. It's the same type of assistance, um, ADL, assistance with ADLs and IADLs, but also supervision. Because it could be that uh, the older adult really doesn't need assistance with the activities of daily living. They just need supervision and a caregiver need respite just to get out. Mm -hmm. um, another service, we talked about the outer home, which is the adult daycare services. Sonia also talked about um, the Veterans Directed Program, which is a baby of ours. We worked very, very closely to get that program launched. And it's also a person-centered approach. Um, since COVID, we um, launched in-home COVID testing and in-home COVID vaccination for those older adults and their caregivers. That's something that we've been offering now for two years. And each time I think it's going away, COVID continues to be here. So the program <laughs> is growing and we're actually about to launch another program, which is in-home based too. It's um, healthcare screening and monitoring, which is gonna expand um, the health screening um, process, what we're doing. In addition to that, and that's going to complement our health maintenance program, which is which are services we provide is dental, vision, hearing. And it's all tied in because when we provide the in-home service and conduct a thorough assessment, we look at a lot of the other services that we provide. The medication management, I touched on that earlier. When we're providing, a, when we're doing an assessment, we look at everything holistically. And a lot of times the medications that older adults are taking are conflicting. So we, we have medication management program. We also provide incontinence program. I mean, incontinence supplies to those individuals that need um, the pens and bed liners and also the supplemental um, nourishment drinks, but you must have a prescription for that. So we, we have a ton of in-home services That's that we great. provide. You know, often people say, oh, the AAA is a hidden secret because we have all of these services that people are unaware of and we don't want it to be a hidden secret because we want to make sure that we're covering everyone we can to keep them in their home um whether it's the older adult living alone or giving the caregiver a break knowing that we're there to help and we do wraparound service also to one because our services are short term so we look at the natural support systems in addition to to see if they're eligible for 
like state services through Health and Human Service Commission and try to make sure that they're able to withstand either on the state services or the natural support systems long term. Okay, great, great. You have a ton of information. Ladies, we're getting short on time. Uh, I figured that would happen. We've just got so much information, but we've got a little bit left. Ariel, to quickly, I think you have a program for in-home care. Is that correct? We do. It's our second family. Yes. So we do have a second family program that provides in-home companionship and respite to older adults. And so that program is available. Um, It is a limited, it's not as expansive as like the Harris County Area Agency on Aging, but we do have that service. And so it's based on where that person is, um, what community they live in. And so if you're interested, I I mean, again, I say just contact us because it's kind of like a case by case thing as far as eligibility and availability for the service. But it does provide in-home companionship and respite for the older adults. So um, assistance with taking them to the grocery store, assistance with going to their house and providing the companionship, assistance with taking them to the doctor or transportation if they need the the assistance. And so we partner with um, congregations to implement that program or to provide that service. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, Ladies, we have a few minutes left. I want to just touch on, we could go on on this topic for a long time, I know, and it's how to pay for care. So if we'll just go around the room and let y'all each tell us just a little bit. And if you're watching this live, join us afterwards, because we're going to have these ladies in a uh, conversation circle where you will be able to ask your questions. And that portion is never recorded so that you have that privacy and feel comfortable to ask your questions. If you're watching this after the conference has been over, that's okay. I'm gonna give you all of the information at the end of this program so that you can contact these people one-on-one and get the expert advice that you need. Reach out, it takes a village. It's not just for one. So quickly, we've got about three minutes left. So you each get about a minute. (laughs) Um, Let's start with Ariel, how to pay for care. So I would say contact if you're in the, if you're a veteran, contact touch bases with um, Sonia and her program that she mentioned. If you're in the Harris County area, touch base with um, Suzanne. Those are the primary resources as a caregiver support specialist slash social worker that I discuss on a daily basis. I have the number memorized for AAA in my head. (laughs) So call them. That's my takeaway. Okay. Okay. And I would like to say the takeaway for me is one, if you're, if you're not sure about if you're eligible, contact the area agency on aging. We have certified, certified benefits counselors who will look through and scrub through your policy to see if you have some of these services available. Also, a lot of people, they don't realize when they're in crisis that they've purchased long-term care insurance at some point in their life. We also help them look at that. And in the meanwhile, we're gonna provide services, but we're, we're trying to work on looking at what they're eligible for, what's in their policy they may have forgotten. But just call us, 832-393-4301. We have certified benefits counselors and we have care managers who are equipped to help you identify what's needed to stay in your home. The agent just to great clarify, training. just to clarify, Suzanne, there is no charge to talk to a benefits counselor. Correct. correct. All services through the Harris County Area Agency on Aging are at no cost. Cost. We're not means tested at all. We do look at the whole situation and figure out what services will best meet your need and then work with you for long-term care options while we're providing the services. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ms. Sonia. And for the VA, never, ever, ever, ever be afraid to come in. It doesn't cost you anything. And the fact that you serve is your entry into everything. While different things may have different copay amounts, our copay amounts are not as 
are not like you would on the open market. Again, as I said, for veteran for adult daycare, if you had a copay, it's never going to be more than $15 a day. And the most important thing is to fill out something called an extended care benefits, um, extended care application. And that is where you will put your income and asset information so that we can see um, exactly if you have any copay or if you're not, and if you're a service-connected veteran, most of these things will you will not have one. And if you do have a copay, it's going to be something that we can kind of try to help you out with. And there's also a status called catastrophically disabled. And if you get that distinction, it wipes out everything. You're going to be exempt from any copays for anything. So the best thing to do is come to Michael Lee DeBakey VA Medical Center and go to the eligibility office or go to one of your outlying community outpatient clinics. We have them in Humble, we have them um, in Lake Jackson, we have them in Conroe, they're all over the place. Just present yourself. And if all else fails, go to www.va.gov slash eligibility. And, and all again, of, I'm going to put that information all of these on the last slide so that you have it. Yeah. All right, ladies, this was absolutely wonderful. I thank you so much for being here today. Um, and I know you've provided a ton of information. Again, if you're watching live, you're going to be able to ask, answer your question, get your questions answered. So stay with us. All right, everybody. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right.